So back to another small engine weekend, or Saturday or Sunday or whenever this video comes out. Well, behind me here we have this lawnmower here. Uh, it's a Murray. And before I did anything, I attempted to pull start it. Pull starter is down here and it actually is still attached to the rope, which is a great thing. But it felt like it was seized. It did not want to pull at all, so I stood the thing up and turned the blade in the opposite direction of the pull starter and it puked oil out the intake. So it's probably not seized. It's probably hydrolocked. Why all that oil is in it is anybody's guess. It could be why they threw this thing out. Some of the kid may some kid may have just put too much oil in it. When he was working on it, his parents got pissed and threw it outside, but it doesn't look too awfully old. It doesn't look beat up. It just seems like it's hydrolocked. Now it could also be part my fault because I've had this thing for a couple months. It has been sitting out in the rain. It's a possibility rain could have gotten the crankcase and you know brought the oil and water level way up high and cause the thing to hydrolock itself. But for all that said, after all that noise, if it does need any parts, you know where I'm going. I'm going to the HIPAA store. Who is the HIPAA store, you say? Well, come on, guys, you should know this by now. The HIPAA store is a company that sells parts for lawnmowers, generators, chainsaws, some go-karts, and lots of other outdoor power equipment. Currently, the HIPAA store is running a $1 sale on all spark plugs, so check your equipment and get yourself a couple just to keep in case. HIPAA store spark plugs are about as inexpensive as bananas, but they won't spoil in your toolbox. And how do you get some HIPAA quality power equipment parts? Well, by following the affiliate link down below in the video description. Because when you support HIPAA, you also support my video creation on this YouTube channel. Special thanks again to the HIPAA store for sponsoring this video. There's our temperature out here in the shade, 104.3. Humidity again is wrong, 23%. It's more like 50%. But nonetheless, it's uh, hot out here. All right, for starters, let's pull out this spark plug. Let's see what comes out of the cylinder. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a lot of oil on there, and it's gushing out right now. So we were definitely hydrolocked. Let's see if we can blow it out now. And now it's turning over. Whereas it would not before. Alright, we're picking up pine needles and this piece of paper that's under here. Pine needles are really bad this season because it's been so dry for the last six weeks. Alright, anyway, the cylinder's blown out. Let's check our oil. Let's see how much oil we got in there. And I need something to wipe that with. Here we go. Wipey wipey. Roosters are gonna be making a lot of noise today. Because it's hot and you don't wanna go in. Yeah, our oil is way over the top. You can see the little arrow? It's supposed to be here. It's about an inch and a quarter above that. So, <laughs> the oil looks like it's brand new, except for what was in the cylinder. I didn't see any water in there. Um, I gotta let some oil out. Clearly that's part of our problem. It may not be the whole problem, but it's definitely part of our problem. So let me put down something over here to try to collect uh, the mess. Uh, I guess I should have a cookie sheet or something somewhere. That'll probably be great. And we're just gonna tip it up on its side and let some out. Also, this is loose. Which doesn't seem to matter. The shroud's just a little loose. All plastic, but that's modern stuff for you. All right, well, here we go. Just kind of winging it here. Oh, let's just get out enough. Whoa! All right, may not work out as well as I had hoped. I don't see any water. We lose. Check our shit stick again. Just a little high. Just a little high. I'm gonna let out just a little bit more. That'll do it. We're gonna 
have to shoot this thing down with the greaser now. <laughs> Oh, mower is oily as hell. Yuck! Alright, here we go. Our level. It looks like the oil is all up inside the tube. Not giving me an accurate measurement here. There we go. We're right on the line. Good guess, huh? Okay. And even if we're not on the line, it looks like we're close enough that it's gonna work. Okay, wipe some of this stuff down here just to get some of the gunk off of it. <laughs> All right, this spark plug looks like hell. <laughs> I'm gonna give it one attempt to clean it. As I said, I should have a HIPAA spark plug inside that'll replace this. That thing is black. They probably ran it a little bit while it was uh, full of oil, and I'm sure they did with how bad this thing looks. My word, that is just terrible. All right, let's see if we can get the torch lit and this fan running. Probably not. Oh, no, it lit. I don't believe it. Didn't think it would. Well, let me step out of the Is fire polished, flame broiled, and ready to go. Now, this thing's still got a ton of oil in it. I do not expect this to be a one full wonder. I'm sure there's still some sitting in the intake, so all that's gonna need to blow through. Um, does it even have any gas in it? It does, and you know, it doesn't smell bad either. Well, that's a good sign. I mean, it don't smell great, it smells like it's older gas, you know, perhaps six months to a year old. But let's just wind this in here. I love using the impact on that. As people yell at me, Duck Man, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> All right, let's pull this air cleaner out because I'm sure it's full of oil. Not only was I right, but it's obliterated. some of the gunk out of there. Prime it a little bit, right? Let's give it a pull and see if she starts. I doubt it, but you never know, right? All right, let's put a little bit of fresh gas on top of that shitty shit fuel, which is not very much of, but... Not a ton, we're just going with some because we may find ourselves draining it all back out. With the cost of fuel nowadays, do I even need to say? This is still dirty. All right, see if we can get the prime. It doesn't feel like it's priming. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, there's no bar on it. The bar is missing. I'm gonna have to pull up on this with something. Let's see if I got one from another mower. Well, that was a surprise, huh? It's a good thing I have other mowers. Just simply swipe one off one of the other ones. Just tuck this cable in there first. There we go. This little guy needs to be zip tied on. I'm trying to come off, otherwise, I think it'll work. We should strengthen it up a little bit. And I'll put one more here. Just for good measure. There we go. Now let's try it. Much better. All right, now let's see if we can start. I'll put you guys on the side where all the smoke comes out. <laughs> this is uh, supposed to have the rope way up here. Let's 
this is going to be a little hard to start anyway. Yeah, look at that. All right, well, that's an issue. Will it snap back? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Right now, it doesn't want to be my friend at all. All right, well. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I'm glad I got that on camera. I don't see any smoke. Wonder if we got any spark. Let's find out. One hour later. Well, I forgot to hit the record button, but I unbolted the shroud. It's just three bolts all the way around. Not a big deal, not difficult. But in doing so, I discovered that the pull starter stuff is kind of busted. It's not in very good shape. I have another mower just like this one. It's in worse shape, so I think the pull starter's on there is good. So we're going to put it on here. I also discovered that the coil is touching the flywheel right about there where the magnet is. That's not doing it any good. It's, it's probably not affecting the spark, but it's not doing it any good where it's at. Here's the wire that goes back to the switch that the bar uh, will, will essentially deactivate. It shuts the coil off by shorting it to ground. With that disconnected, though, I'd like to see if we got a spark now that I could actually find it. Um, let's put the new, start, well, old new starter back on here and see if we can get it fired up with the one from the other mower. See if that makes a difference for spark. All right, well, let's see what happens. All right, here's the one we just took apart. See, it's missing all the plastic stuff and the spring that's inside of there. Whereas here's the one that comes off of the other mower that's dead in the yard. And this one still has everything attached and it looks like it's whole and in one piece. So, everything's good on it except the rope, but there's the rope. I should be able to switch out the T-handle and put it back. Now, I think this plastic pops out of here. It looks like it's just going to come right out. Look, kids, it comes out. There it is. And this one should do the same thing. Tight. All right, well, there it is reassembled and you probably say hey you know why didn't you just take the whole cover from the other mower and just throw it on there and be done with it and the answer is because i would have lost half a horsepower this is a four and a half horsepower cover and this is a five horsepower cover so i want to keep my five horses on there we don't need a slower mower do we no it's not a slow job it's a mow job i wouldn't mind a slow job tonight but anyway um we got this wire detached you might recall we're gonna go ahead and stick on these bolts in here get this thing snug back down and we'll try it again and we'll see if we get a spark everything fits much better on it. this old cover here was shrunken or warped or I don't see any cracks in it or anything but plastic on it feels really soft though this one's harder Weird, I don't know. Anyway, let's see if I can get a spark out of it with this detached. Might make a difference. If it doesn't, then we're replacing the coil. All right, well, here goes. All right, let's go ahead and try that spark test again. I got the spark plug set up right there. The bar switch is now completely disabled. In fact, you can see the wire dangling to it right over here. That's it. So we'll see if um, it's gonna work. Those switches, not unusual for them to go bad. All right, here we go. Yep, we got spark. And this rope doesn't want to recoil. Almost as bad as the other one was. All right, well anyway, we definitely have a spark. Good. Let's put the spark plug back in. Prime it up. Let's see if we can get this thing fired. Here we go. Come 
time for it to get started. Helps if I thread it in where the hole is. Oops, couldn't find the hole. Go. Cap back on. Priming, priming, priming. Oh, oh, wow, 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 wow. Have another runner sweet well I fixed the run switch that wire that went around to the back and I have it covered up but it was just detached and touching the case of the engine I, I don't know how that could have shorted it up because it was detached from the wrong side but I simply put it back on where it belonged I gave it one pull start and it starts so watch Oh. And it does exactly what it's supposed to. I need to fix the heat shield, which is bouncing around. I'm going to put the rope where it belongs, and I'm going to degrease the whole mower and uh, replace the air filter on a few other things, and this is going to be a good user for the rest of the season. Fantastic. It's too bad it's not a generator, because next week we're expecting, guess what? Haha, <laughs> the big old H word. Yeah. Good thing I got the other generators ready to go though, so we'll just have to see what happens when it happens. But currently it's forecast to go somewhere between Tampa and Tallahassee, and that means here we're probably going to have cool breezes coming from the north. And that means instead of it being 104 degrees, it'll be 90 degrees. But that's a huge break from what we've had, and possibly, possibly a little bit of rain here and there. Again, we haven't had any rain in like six weeks. So everything is just so dry, it's like sand out here. A desert. It's terrible. I mean, there's just dust on everything. Anyway, okay. Let's fix up the last couple things on here, put this thing back together so it's whole, and we got us another working mower. All right, for starters, we got us a pull rope loop. Put our pull up through here. And we can snug this back down. Now that's where it belongs. It makes it hot. This thing starts easy too. My word, this thing starts easy. All right, happy with that. Let's get that exhaust permanently now. Got the screw out of the muff. The other mower is just like this one. We need to handle the air cleaner. All right, this air cleaner on here is a little worse for wear, but we will get a brand new one from the HIPAA store. This is something good enough to get us started. It's as clean as I could get it with just some carburetor cleaner. This whole thing needs to be degunked. Obviously, this thing had been spitting oil for a while, so they must have had the oil way overfilled on it for quite some time. Good. Give it a good degunking. And she's ready to be put in service. All right, well, a little washy washy went a long way. Thing looks practically brand new. And it runs really good, too. So, this is, like I said, something that's going to be a good user. So, anyway, I guess that's about it on this one. But before we end the video, let's go ahead and show a little bit about what's going on this week. 
and what we've got coming up in the Volkswagen world. Yeah! It's good stuff, guys. All right, back up here, we got the Goldfish Bowl 1974 Stupid Beetle. Those of you that guess it was a 74, you're right, because that's the number on the pan, right down there in the back. In here, I started sorting through some of the parts because it came down to getting the engine mounted this week. And, hey, you may have even seen that video already. I don't know what order I release these things in. But there's the engine. It's in. All the nuts and bolts need to be finalized. I still need to put the tin in, the electrical, the belts. I got to put the carburetor back on. I mean, all the accessories need to go on, but nonetheless, the engine is mounted. And that's what's important because this is a position that the previous owner could not get into. He was having issues with uh, getting the engine aligned, and it turned out most of the problem was, well, they uh, let the engine support itself on just the bottom studs without pushing it in all the way, which caused the bottom studs to get all kinds of wonky. So if the bottom studs are doing this, then the engine won't go in straight. You gotta push the engine in like this because the studs are like that now. So anyway, yeah, it was all kinds of bending, twisting, carsing. It was not a very good day when it came to putting that in. It was also hot as hell out here, as you can tell. It's 104 degrees out here today, although it's starting to finally cool down. I had to take so many breaks today. It took me all day to get that mower running, even though it should have only been about an hour job. But <laughs> square back over here, I still need to do some work on. Right now I got some tools shoved in the back here because it was just convenient when I was working on this beetle. This deck lid also made a great sunshade when the sun was coming over the trees in the front yard. But I gotta cut up that metal in there and replace this whole metal surround in here. The more I look at it, the more I realize it's a lot less cuts than I thought. So it's not that much work. And we're gonna use a lot of panel bond to get that thing all stuck back together. So that's the plan, but this is the metal. And all these tools that are in here and everything is leaving because most of the tools, well, they belong to me. And all the engine parts and things belong to that. So we'll get that squared up and out of there this week. And then hopefully we get the uh, body work done on this thing. Uh, that one. That square back over there, still have not gotten a title on it. But as I said, Florida Law says I can foreclose on it after about six months of storage, and that's the way it's been here. What the uh, tax office is gonna do is tax office will send her a letter, and they will say, hey, we got this car here with storage fees on it. Um, you wanna pay the storage fees? And then she's got one of three choices. She can pay the storage fees and get her car back. She can say, no, I'm not paying the storage fees, which means the car is mine. Or she could say nothing at all, which means it's automatically mine. I win by default. So one of those three things is gonna happen. So either way, out of all the above, something's gonna work out for me. But I wanna move this into the backyard because that's where the chassis is at, the bus chassis. And I just kinda of wanna get this thing slam dunked on top of it so I can figure out where I'm gonna do all the trimming and welding and how I'm gonna finish the mounts on it. It doesn't need a whole ton of work, but it does need something. Yeah, look at this, this is new. From it sitting here, people have walked into it and they fucked up my antenna. All right, well, something else for me to deal with. That was not that bad before. I always tell them, don't cut the lawn over here. This is my job. They always come over here and cut the lawn. And I think that's what happened. Somebody got snagged on it, just like they did on my trim, which they also screwed up. They broke that. That wasn't even off of it. Somebody broke it and removed it and took it away. So yeah, anyway, I can't complain because the parking spot's free. That's not my parking spot. I'm not complaining. Like I said, we're good. <laughs> Rob's Beetle over there. I still need to get to it. It runs and drives. He actually managed to drive it over here from the other side of town without uh, without any big problems. It just needs to be gone through, and I think we need to put it up for sale. He's got a little bit of a, a debt that he needs to settle up with me. He owes me some money, so I think we're going to fix it up and probably try to sell it, or maybe he'll drive it for a little bit. We just renewed the registration on it and renewed the insurance and everything on it, so that way, while we have it for sale sign on it, he can take it out and play with it a little bit. Because a car that's out and running about with a for sale sign on it is much more likely to sell than one that's sitting idle, if you know what I mean. So... Anyway, that's the Volksrad, and I know where to get a set of four fenders for it, too, so that could even be an option for somebody that might be interested in buying this thing. That happens to be Rob's truck right now. He's uh, moving. So uh, he's moving around with his camper for a little bit until he finds a place he wants to go. So he's camping out a week here and a week there and a week here and a week there, and this week he's here. <laughs> Still need to work on the lug nut on this thing. Everybody gave a lot of suggestions, but not one of the suggestions is going to work because nobody understands how the lug nut works. Here's a picture of it on the screen. I actually managed to make a tool for it a couple years ago when I removed the back ones. But the front ones, the <laughs> last guy to change the tires on here, he torqued the living dog shit out of them with the impact and didn't properly use a torque wrench. And then because it hasn't come off in years, they rusted. 
So I have not been able to get it off of there and I've made a tool to do it and the tool actually broke So I'm gonna have to find some hardened sockets and make up something new and get that wheel off Especially this one because if I could have put a spare on here I could actually drive the thing temporarily at least until I can get that together I just blew my wad on registration and insurance because my birthday is next month and that means the Florida birthday tax is due and I explained it in the previous videos. Um, Florida doesn't just tax you because it's your birthday. What they actually do is they expire all your vehicle registrations on your birthday. So happy birthday! Pay the state of Florida. So I had to renew all my stuff. Fun. <laughs> yeah. So after spending many hundreds of dollars, thankfully it's not California. California would have really got murdered. Here in Florida it's actually not too bad. I think it's even cheaper than it was in New Jersey. But still, it's a lot of money because, well, I got a lot of toys. So toys need to be properly registered. All right. Let's go back and take a look at the chickens. Oh, by the way, Ruby's doing a little something, too. Right, we had to focus suddenly. Focus! Ruby's got some gunk in one of the carburetors. It seems like it stirs up once in a while, and she has trouble idling. So it's one of the idle jets on one side. I don't know which. I really haven't investigated yet. But if I rev the engine up a bit and then slap my hand over the carburetor and then drive, it's fine after that. But then after driving for a day or so, or maybe even ten minutes, all of a sudden it starts sputtering again at idle. But you could run it open open on the road it's fine it's only in the idle circuit so I gotta pull the carbs off or at least pull out the idle jets and clean them all right let's go have a look at the chickens well boomer was playing out here earlier I don't know where the hell he went but they're playing musical cages again right now you can see cheeky is in frosty's cage because frosty didn't want to go in a cage today frosty is boomer frosty wanted to go in with mama and uh, biddy Hey, Biddy, come on, attack the camera. I know you want to. You always do it. Go ahead. <laughs> so anyway, there's uh, Frosty over there. There's Mama. Look at a bald spot on her wing. That's from the boys jumping on her and ripping her feathers out. Anyway, that's why they wear those capes on their backs, was to help prevent that. Cheeky doesn't wear one, though, because Cheeky's my bird and she stays close to me, so they really don't mess with her too much unless she wanders off. And if she wanders off, she's a dummy. And in there is Peanut. The peanut's sister is currently inside. She's uh, very, very smart. Yeah, she's very smart. Fluffy is extremely smart. She'll start banging on a cage and jumping around like crazy when she wants to go inside because she likes to lay an egg in the air conditioner. So I open the door to the cage and she runs right in the back door and I follow her and she jumps up into my arms and I can put her in her little basket inside where she'll sit inside for about an hour or so in the AC and lay an egg. And then when she's done, she starts making noises or she jumps out and comes down the hallway all by herself. Look, Biddy wants to come out. I can't let you out, Biddy, because Cheeky's free right now. The door is open over there. I let Cheeky out, and she ran into that cage for whatever reason. Boomer keeps going in there, too. There must be something about that spot. Maybe that's a cool spot or something. I don't know, but they seem to be happy. And then my trees. Oh, the lack of rain has really been harsh on these things. You can see all the tips of the uh, leaves are all getting yellow because every time I turn around, these plants are drying out and getting all wilty again. They're um, really desperate for water. It's just been so dry out here and so hot. So anyway, I've been watering them two or three times a day just to keep the leaves on them. Otherwise, uh, they start wilting. You see, actually, this one's still wilting a little bit. The um, habaneros seem to do better, but the poblanos get really wilty whenever they're uh, thirsty. But we got flowers growing again, so we're going to have a whole bunch of fruit. And these fruits are starting to ripen, starting to turn yellow, so they're getting ready to go with that orange color that they usually turn. I guess it's about as big as they get. Here, that one's turning right now. Otherwise, uh, I like them better when they're green, so I may just pick them off now, because I guess they're about as big as they're going to grow, and put them inside. I started pickling these things. Um, these are the hottest batch of habanero peppers I've ever had. I mean, even hotter than the ones I've had at the store-bought. I don't know if it's the hot summer that has just abused the living crap out of these things and that's why they've uh, become so hot. Or maybe it's just the fact that I can't keep these things watered enough that they're just pissed off. <laughs> but they're so incredibly hot, I have a little bit and I'm dying. And normally I, I can eat a couple of these things almost straight up um, and I'm fine. But even just putting uh, a couple of these into a pot of uh, spaghetti, for example, it's too hot. It's just incredibly too hot. I cooked some the other day on a frying pan on the stove when I was making some sloppy joes and uh, it was like napalm in the kitchen. Um, it was just too hot, entirely too hot. I couldn't breathe. My eyes were swelled up. I mean, you know, I might as well have just been pepper sprayed. I couldn't breathe. Rob was laughing at me because I shared the stuff with him. <laughs> and uh, anyway, we had to go eat dinner outside. As hot as it was, it was still more comfortable to be outside. Anyway, what do you think, Biddy? 
What do you think? You want to attack me one more time? Come on, get the camera. <laughs> Come on, one more time. Do it. He hates this camera for some reason. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Come here. Come get daddy. Give daddy a peck. Give daddy a peck. Come on, Christmas peck. No? All right, fine then. <laughs> Good cheeky. Cheeky's my girl. Right, Cheeky? Your beak is all dirty. I see you need to reload your water there. That dried up pretty quick today, didn't it? Just like my flower pots over here with these plants. All right. Well, I guess that's it. So, licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out Duck Shit Down There for all of my different social media links, as well as the links for how to get to the HIPAA store. Thanks again to HIPAA for sponsoring this video, and uh, we'll probably be back with another one next weekend. So thanks for watching. Right, Biddy? <laughs> see you soon. And we'll let you know about that hurricane. We're probably going to have some updates on that coming up soon. So we'll see what happens this week. It's supposed to start having something with that as soon as Monday, Tuesday. No later than Wednesday, Thursday. But we'll see what the forecast shows. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.